How vaccination changed the world. Coming along with coronavirus fever is the vaccine fever. After the first case found in late 2018, early 2019, it takes the world over a year to be able to start having their first COVID-19 vaccine shots. While there's still a lot of discussions about the side effects along with their reliability, let's take a trip to see why the vaccine is called one of the greatest inventions of humankind. Before vaccination, or in another term inoculation, was known in the West in the 19th century, almost a thousand years prior in China. There were hints of the practice as a variolation for smallpox during the 10th century. In the oldest documents which were around the 16th century, a pediatrician showed a method as nasal insufflation, administered by blowing powdered smallpox materials like scabs, to one's nostrils. These methods also got reported to the British and France's royals in the early 18th century. Not sure if this inspired the West to start the theory about vaccination, but after this period, there's dramatic changes in the scientists' views about immunization. In 1796, an English doctor named Edward Jenner had tested a common theory if a person had contracted cowpox could be immune to smallpox. He took cowpox vesicles from a milkmaid named Sarah Nelms, then infected an eight-year-old boy named James Phipps. Two months later, he inoculated the boy with smallpox, which was not developed. In 1798, he published the report and caused widespread interest along with controversy within the medical profession and religious opposition for using animal material. In 1801, they had translated it into six languages and got over 100,000 people vaccinated. The term vaccination was also coined in 1800 during this time. Not long after, vaccination became firmly established in British India. By 1807, the British had vaccinated over 1 million Indians and Sri Lankans against smallpox. Soon after this, a lot of countries started vaccination policy and launching vaccination campaigns in Spanish, the Kingdom of Nepal, Russia, or Serbia. In early 1870, scientist Louis Pasteur while studying chicken cholera disease, with the influence of Edward Jenner, he reasoned if a vaccine could be found for smallpox. It could be found for all diseases. After almost 10 years, one day, by accident, Pasteur's assistant forgot to inject the chickens with a fresh culture of the viral bacteria and left it exposed to oxygen. After a month of holiday, he performed the procedure using the old cultures, which caused the chickens to only show mild signs of the disease and survived. After that, when injected with fresh bacteria again, the chickens did not become ill. This discovery can be considered the birth of immunology, as Pasteur was the first to proceed this to the laboratory, impacting all virologists who followed him. After this, Louis Pasteur helped develop a vaccine for anthrax on farm animals. Then vaccine for rabbits on dogs and rabbits. In 1885, he first treated his first human patient, a nine-year-old boy who was attacked by a feral dog. At that time, this could only mean dead but after being given 13 further inoculations in 10 days with portions of the cord were progressively fresher. Until after three months he announced that the child's health appeared excellent. By 1886, he had treated over 350 patients all over Europe, Russia, and America. In the next decades, thanks to Louis Pasteur's works, live and attenuated vaccines were developed and introduced for a lot of the world's most deadly diseases like diphtheria, plague, tuberculosis, yellow fever, measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, and rotavirus. Till 1959, more than 100 countries in the world had proceeded with vaccination campaigns. The World Health Organization, WHO had made many calls in a global effort to erase smallpox, while this disease still haunted over 33 countries, caused more than 100 million cases and 2 million deaths every year. If in the 1980s, there were around 20 to 40 percent of children in the world who got vaccinated the six preventable deadly diseases, like measles, poliomyelitis, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, and tuberculosis. In 2020, there are 83 to 86 percent got vaccinated from the triple threat tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis. If talk about the efficiency, in American history, after the vaccine for polio was invented in 1955, the case number from 15,000 cases of paralysis due to polio in the 1950s went down to 61 cases in 1965. In 1994, this disease is completely erased in the US or with diphtheria, from 200,000 cases and 15,000 deaths in the 1920s. In 2015, almost 100 years from the date vaccine for this disease was found, there was no clear case found. 
Nowadays, with the increase of anti-vax theories along with new viruses and their variants keep popping up, the latter stronger than the previous one, many people, include well-educated ones or working in medical and health field, has refused to vaccine for themselves and their children. This direct, or indirectly, made those deadly diseases that seems to be eliminated from the earth came back. For example, there was a measles outbreak that happened in Washington DC, US in January 2019 with 72 cases, lead to a state of emergency, even this disease had been declared eradicated in 2000s. While the COVID-19 pandemic is breaking out all over the world, there are a lot of people who hesitated to take the vaccine even it is proven to be effective in many countries and religions. It's just like any other health method, there would be always mistakes, and sometimes doesn't work. But it should not be the reason to refuse one more shield to protect yourself and the people around you. The story of Lydia Rodriguez, who had firmly rejected the vaccine and got the disease not long after, had messaged to her doctor to make sure all her children would be vaccinated. Her husband had died not long before because of the same reason, which left their kids the huge medical bills. But anyway, vaccine is still a choice in most countries. But when death came, it's not your choice to live or not. Think before you decide. Which topic do you want us to do next? Comment and subscribe to us for more content in the future.